Streamers are playing catch up to other content creators like podcasters and YouTubers when it comes down to audio and it really all boils down to one thing, your microphone chain. Streamers have spent hundreds of dollars on XLR and USB setups only to sound dead or to have their microphone pick up every noise in their room. Not only that, Streamers have gone to extraordinary lengths to resolve this. You've got the Go XLR, the NT-USB Mini, the Personas Revelator. Streamers are even spending hundreds of dollars on full-size production racks and swearing by them for something that is honestly so simple. Well, I've got some good news. You can recreate that exact same microphone chain in OBS for free. Let me show you how. If you're new to the channel, I'm John Horseman. I also go by Kick Tripod and I design technology and audio products for streamers and content creators. Not only that, I've consulted for some of the biggest companies in the audio and technology industries on how to make audio better for streamers. When I'm not doing that, I spend a little bit of extra time on my personal YouTube channel to talk about topics and products that I find interesting. If you like the channel, make sure to give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and click the bell to get a notification whenever a new video goes live. Before we really dive in, let's talk about microphone chains. And if you already know what all of this is about, I've got timestamps in the video description, you can skip ahead, but it's important for everybody to be on the same page about what we mean when we're talking about a microphone chain. A microphone chain is a series of plugins and effects that you apply to your microphone to try and make your voice sound better. Microphone chains can be really complicated or they can be really simple. The good news is, is that for content creators, most of us really need just a simple microphone chain that it consists of about four plugins. The even better news is, is that there's some baseline settings that any content creator can apply and get about 75% of the way to perfecting their voice via the microphone chain. If you have a Go XLR, you've probably already seen my Go XLR mic settings video. This video is designed to simply take those settings and translate them to free OBS plugins. This is very important. Everybody's voice is different. There is no such thing as the best microphone settings that can be universally applied to everyone. However, there are settings that can be universally applied that will make you sound better, just maybe not perfect. If you want your best sound, you can do a ton of research on your own and a ton of tweaking and playing. You can hire somebody. There's people on Fiverr and other websites that allow you to do that. Or you can join my Discord and post your settings and information in the Sound Check Me channel and we'll help you out there as well. There's one other disclaimer in this video that I wanna talk about before we can actually dive in, and that is free has trade-offs. It also has advantages. There are two distinct disadvantages for going with software and free plugins instead of hardware for your microphone chain. First is latency. If you've ever worked with a professional before, they insist on monitoring their voice. They wanna hear themselves in real time with the effects on so they understand clearly how they sound to their audience. You aren't able to do this with the software route because there's some limitations with Windows Audio and it's just, just not quite there yet. Second is computer resource usage. When you're running additional software or additional plugins, it's gonna take up additional CPU and RAM. Honestly, the hit to this is pretty low and it shouldn't affect most of you, but it's worth bringing up. OBS comes with all the tools you need for a great microphone chain, except for one, EQ. For that, we're going to download plugins from Reaper. Simply go to the website in the description below, that's reaper.fm slash REA plugs, download the package and install it. Once you've done that, let's open OBS and get started. First, make sure you add your microphone to its own track. You can do this by going up to file, settings, audio, and clicking on mic auxiliary audio. Make sure to name it something that you can remember if you have a lot of sources. 
Next, we're going to set up our gain. Your gain is how you boost the signal of your microphone to make it audible. Your microphone or audio interface is likely going to have a gain control somewhere. Set up your gain so that when you're speaking your loudest, you're peaking somewhere between negative 15 to negative 10 dB in OBS. Okay, so now we can get to the actual plugins. In the OBS audio mixer, click on the cogwheel next to your microphone and then click on filters. I've disabled mine for the time being, but you'll be adding these on your own. The first plugin we're going to add is the expander plugin. To add a plugin, simply click the plus button in the bottom left hand corner and click on whatever plugin I tell you to. In this case, we're adding the expander. Next to the expander, there's this little eyeball Make sure that it is immediately disabled. So you should have a line running through it. We're gonna go back to the expander later, but we want this first in the audio chain. Next, we're going to add the equalizer. An equalizer is what we use to make your voice sound better by reducing unwanted parts of your voice and increasing desirable parts of your voice. For this, you'll wanna click the plus button and you'll want to click on VST 2.x plugin. Name this EQ. From there, you'll get a drop down list to be able to add any of the plugins that you've installed. In this case, we want the REA EQ standalone plugin. I've already added it, so I'm going to go ahead and just enable it for a second. Once you've added it, let's go ahead and open up the plugin interface. So this is the part that is going to most depend on your voice. I'm gonna give you some universal options that I recommend to just about anybody with any voice, just like I did in my Go XLR video, but you can tweak with this, and I encourage you to tweak with this however you like. But here's good bass settings to start. Let's click on the first tab here and change the type to high pass. Set the frequency to 100 hertz, the gain to zero, and the bandwidth to 1.24. Now let's go to band number two. Let's make sure that the type is selected as band. Set the frequency to 153, the gain to 1.4, and the bandwidth to 0 0.80. Let's go to number three, make sure the type is band. Frequency, 500 hertz, gain, negative 2.4, bandwidth, 1.32. And for four, we're going to make sure the type is band. The frequency is 4,006.5 hertz. The gain is 1.6, and the bandwidth is two. The Reaper EQ plugin only comes with four bands, so we need to add a fifth by clicking on the Add Band in the bottom left-hand corner. When you've done that, make sure the type is Band. Make the frequency 7703, 7703. The gain, 2.6, and the bandwidth, 0.67. This EQ is really close to what I recommend with the Go XLR. It's a little bit different because we're looking at a graphical representation of this, but it will be very close and you'll be able to hear them side by side at the end. Next, we're going to add a compressor. Compressors are super important and often overlooked when it comes to your microphone chain. What a compressor tries to do is to reduce the range between the loudest and quietest parts of your recording by compressing your voice when you get loud. In the end, it makes the dynamics of your voice more consistent. Here are some great settings I recommend using. First, make sure to add the compressor, hit the plus button and go to compressor. Change ratio to four to one, threshold to negative 17 attack to 10 milliseconds, release to 100 milliseconds, and we're gonna maybe play with the output cane in a little bit, but five is usually pretty safe when it comes to setting that output gain. I'm now enabling this, and you'll notice that I'm kind of peaking up again at negative 10 to negative 15. Because I'm maybe a tad quiet, I'm going to add another 
two decibels to my output gain. Earlier on in the video, I had you add the expander plugin, but we immediately disabled it. So let's go ahead and enable it by clicking on the eyeball next to expander. We're gonna use the expander in what's called gate mode. So the gate, you'll notice that OBS actually has a gate uh, plugin built in, a noise gate plugin, but there's extra parameters that I don't necessarily really like or think are necessary. This is designed to be a really quick and easy way to set up a, a gate, and you don't actually need all those extra parameters. So go ahead and set the preset to gate, the ratio at 10 to one, we'll talk about threshold in a second, attack to 10 milliseconds, release to 200 milliseconds, output gain to zero, and detection to RMS. Now this is the part of the tutorial that I can't do for you, and that is setting your gate threshold. However, I can tell you how to best set this up. So I have turned I'm just gonna turn the expander off for a second. You'll notice that my voice makes a little bit, or my background noise makes a little bit of noise down at negative 60 dB. I'm gonna be quiet a second so you can see it happening. That little bit of movement is my noise floor. It's telling me that my noise floor is peaking up between like negative 60 to negative 58 decibels. If you have a louder noise floor in your room, yours might up might be up higher to negative 55 or even negative 50. If it goes much higher than that, you might have a noise floor problem and it might get really difficult to get great audio, but we're not gonna talk about that or worry about that today. Hopefully your noise floor is down below negative 50 decibels. So what you wanna do is find where your noise floor is we're just gonna say mine's at negative 60, and you wanna add an additional five to seven decibels over that for your threshold. So I'm gonna to go to negative 53, or as close to it as I can get. There we go. So now when I go ahead and enable the expander, you'll notice none of that background noise comes through that was previously coming through. You're gonna to have to play around with this a little bit and create some test recordings so that you get the best sounding expander. If you set your threshold too low, it's gonna to let too much noise in. You might notice that you know, your PC fans activate it when, they, when you're playing a game. You might notice mouse clicks or keyboard clicks. That being said, if you set the threshold too high, it's going to start cutting out parts of your voice. So take a little bit of time, set a few different thresholds. I would say if you can't really dial it in, start at where you think it is and slowly raise it by about three dBs until you find the perfect balance between getting the background noise out of the way and not cutting off your voice. The last thing we're going to do is add a limiter. A limiter is designed to ensure that you don't clip during your broadcast and distort your vocals. Limiting settings are pretty standard. We're just gonna call it limiter and I'm going to make the limiter negative one, or as close to negative one as I can get. And I'm gonna keep the release time at 60 milliseconds. This just makes sure that if I get really loud, if I just yell into my microphone, it won't clip, it won't distort, it'll get hard stopped at negative one decibels. So that's it. You don't need a $250 mixer. You don't need a bunch of audio experience. All you need to sound great are some baseline settings and just a little bit of nudge in your understanding to really know what these different parameters do. If you wanna know more about what these plugins do rather than just getting the settings, I have a long 30 minute video about the best microphone settings for every mic that I go through and explain in depth. If you have any questions about what we did today, I'm happy to respond to them. Just leave a comment down below or post it in our Discord. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe, give the video a thumbs up, and of course, click the bell to get a notification whenever a new video goes live. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.